We talked about humility in speaking. What does humility have to do with communication? It makes you an, an attractive person to go to when people know that they're not going to get an attitude or they're not, you know, they're not going to get cussed out for, you know, being too personal or whatever. So he's going to talk to you a little bit about speaking with the media and his experiences with the Seahawks and also his experience with his radio show now. So I've said enough. With no further ado, give a warm welcome to Rob Tobin. Thanks, guys. Jeff pretty much said it all, so I'll take questions now. Um, no, I'd love to just take a few minutes and just kind of tell you uh, about, you know, how I how I ended up here today, um, and then we'll take questions. I know some of you guys might have some questions. Could be about dealing with the media. Could be about speech. Could be about uh, um, just Seahawks or football or whatever it might be. So I'm more than happy to take all those questions. Uh, you know, Jeff is mentioning uh, being told you can't do. I like the shirt, by the way. Sweatshirt there. Go <laughs> uh, Jeff was telling me, uh, you know, was saying, you know, being told you can't do. I, I, I was told by my dad a lot that I can't do things and that I would do them anyway and get in trouble. Um, so I kind of learned those lessons <laughs> there the hard way. But uh, um, yeah, I was uh, I was one of those guys that that was fortunate enough uh, to be able to live out a dream. You know, every little boy I knew in elementary school, we all had the same dream to try to play pro football someday or, or play some sort of sport and do all that thing. And I was one of the lucky few that got to do that and, and very thankful for that. Um, so, you know, and then to be able to do it for 14 years. When I first got in the game, I just wanted just to play, hang around long enough to just get enough money to buy a car. <laughs> Didn't have to be a nice car, just a car. You know, so um, I did my best to, to hang on. I hung on the first year, and then uh, second year comes around. Of course, you want to make the team second year, and so I, I made it the second year. And then next thing you know, you put a few years together. You you, you get a few contracts under your belt. Next thing you know, you're you're uh, uh, retiring, and you're and you're 36 years old, and, and you you've had a nice long career. So uh, that went well um, during my career. Uh, Jeff, Jeff was right. I was always, I was kind of a, I was never the, the star of the team or the or, or the Pro Bowl guy or even the Pro Bowl lineman or anything. You know, as a lineman, you kind of get buried, and, and they only talk about you when you do something wrong and things like that. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a lunchbox type job. You know, you just carry your lunch pail to work every day and, and just go to hard, go to work and and do the hard work. And and that's one of the things I actually enjoyed about it was, uh, you know. Um, just the fact that it just it, it, it became a job that you just you know you just grind it out especially during a long football season with a lot of aches and pains and stuff it, it, it could be a grind at times but one of the fortunate things for me was I did get a lot of uh, recognition because I was always willing to talk to the media and when Jeff asked me hey would you would you come down and talk to my um, college class I said well I promised myself I'd never go back to college once I graduated <laughs> I said that was it and he said well no I want you to I want you to talk to him about, uh, you know, it's a speech communication class. I want you to talk to him a little bit about dealing with the media and doing some things like that. And I've had an interesting transition because I, I've gone from dealing with the media um, in, during my career to a post-career now where I, I guess I am part of the media. Um, and, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. But, um, you know, during my dealings with the media, uh, it, you know, they weren't always, it wasn't always smooth and and it wasn't always easy, but there were times that, you know, it, it was fun, it was rewarding, and, and, and you know, I benefited from, from a lot of those uh, experiences with the media. The tough part um, is after, uh, after a tough loss, a tough ball game, you, you know, in football, one of the great things about a sport like baseball is you lose a game, well, I got another one tomorrow night. With football, it kind of sits with you all week, and, and you lose a game, um, and you, gosh, it's, it's, it's a grind and you just can't wait to get to that game the next week and all the preparation that goes into it. You put a full week of your life, uh, a solid week of your life, and, and not including the off season and, and all the preparation that goes on in there to try to win that football game. So to lose a game, you know, it hurts. It, hurt, it hurts pretty bad at times and stuff, especially on some of the teams I played on when I, uh, that were like 3-13. and 13. <laughs> You know, those weren't the... Uh, a lot more losses there than, than, than wins, obviously. Um, but, you know, dealing with the media during those times, it, 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 it can be difficult. But one thing I always found out is that if you're gracious 
and, and respectful to them because they're doing their job. Uh, they'll be gracious and, and respectful uh, to you. Um, one of the first experiences I had was, you know, in college, if somebody wants to talk to you, they come and get you. You go outside the locker room, and everybody in college is happy to talk to the media because you're you're in college and you've never had any exposure to any of that type of stuff before. And so it's just really neat to be able to have the opportunity to see your name in the paper or a picture or, or see yourself on TV. Those types of things really neat. Uh, in the NFL, uh, the first experience I had in the locker room after my first game was. Uh, <laughs> You know, you're sitting there changing, and all of a sudden you turn around, and there's a female reporter sitting right there, and <laughs> wanting to interview you, ask you a question, and you know, you, you know, you at least try to get the towel around you before the interview starts and stuff, and and so that was kind of a learning experience. But it's one of those things that you just like there again. You have to be gracious about it, and they have to be from their perspective. They have to be really respectful. Uh, of you and your space too, because you know you are in their chain. It's your locker room. It's your locker. It's your space. Uh, you're in and out of the shower. You're doing those sorts of things. So it it can be, it can be a, a, you know a, a distraction at times, and, you know, and, and kind of an uncomfortable thing sometimes as well. Um, but you know, you 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 get used to it. You do those sorts of things, and like I said, if you're respectful to to the people, they'll be respectful to you. Uh, another tough situation that I always felt that was really tough is when, when a teammate screwed up, you know, uh, maybe a teammate got in trouble or did something or, or you were having a bad season and there were rumors that the coach was going to get fired and things like that. I can remember uh, reporters coming to me and, and, and they, want you to, they want you to say something bad about the coach. And so they ask a question and, and, and mind you, uh, one of the things that i found and I've learned through the years is when a reporter comes to talk to you, maybe they got an idea for an article or whatever. Nowadays, the story doesn't dictate what they print. In my experience, they have a preconceived idea and a preconceived notion of what they're going to, to write before they ask the question. They have an idea of where they want their story to go and what they want it to say. And, and I find this, I, I, in my opinion, I find this true in pretty much all media nowadays. It's less about reporting and more about edi editorializing. Um, so one of the things that's tricky is when you're dealing with the media is, is understanding the perspective from, their, from where they're coming and the way they're asking their question. And, you know, if you guys ever watch SportsCenter and, you, and you, you see the athletes being interviewed or whatever, uh, you always, you, you pretty much get the same answers, you know, and it's always, it's, part of that's because it's the same question, and part of it is because as an athlete, you don't want to trip up, you don't want to say the wrong thing, you know, because then, you know, you're in the media for, for a negative, because you said the wrong thing, whether you meant it to come out that way or not. I remember, you know, looking at, at my buddy over here with the Washington State teacher uh, shirt, I was a Coug, I'm a diehard Coug, always will be a diehard Coug, but but when I played in Atlanta for seven years, came back up here, I had the opportunity to play for the Seahawks. And my first season with Seattle, kind of getting sidetracked, but my first season with Seattle, um, you know, it was Apple Cup time. And so one of the things they always do, they go to the Huskies and the Cougars that are on the Seahawks, and they get you to talk a little smack and everything. And so I was talking, I played with a bunch of Husky guys in, in a, in, when I was in Atlanta. And, and uh, you know, I had great relationships with them. We won some football games together and had a lot of fun. But while I was being interviewed for this first Apple Cup up here, I talked. I was talking bad about them and everything. But when I was doing it, it was funny. I was laughing. The reporters were laughing. People around that were hearing it were laughing. You know, it was it was fun. It was banter. Um, but when it got when it was written down in the paper. It wasn't. It was bad. And so I had to call and apologize to a couple because it didn't come across the, the, the right way. Uh, fortunately for me, most of them knew uh, I was kind of a smart aleck and, and knew I was joking anyway. But, but you still, you know, it, that's an example and a minor example of why an athlete has to be, and anyone that's, that's being interviewed in the media has to be uh, careful about what they say. You see, like, uh, something bad happens in the community. Uh, the sheriff's department, they have a spokesperson. They don't have, you don't just go interview anybody. They usually have a spokesperson that will deal with the media because they know how to frame the argument and do those things, and, you know, do those sorts of things. The President of the United States has a person that comes out every day and talks to the media 
it's not every single person in his on his staff. It's this one person that knows how to frame the argument, knows how to handle the media and stuff. Uh, but anyways, back to my point. Uh, one of the uh, one of the things that was interesting to me was was that uh, I lost my train of thought. Was that the um, when the reporters come to you, they kind of have a preconceived notion. Say it was a bad loss or a big win or whatever, but they have a way they want to write the story, the story they want to tell. And so they come and ask you a question, and it's not always a negative thing, um, and you answer the question. But it's not the answer they wanted. So they re-ask the question, um, you answer it again, it's still not the answer they want. So they keep re-asking the question, they just frame it a different way uh, from time to time, and eventually either they get what they want or they give up and go on. Um, and there has been occasions where I've gotten frustrated by that, uh, frankly, and, and, and kind of told them, you know, hey, you know what, you're trying to get me to do this, you're trying to get me to say that, I'm not going to do it, you know. Um, you know, so you need to move on or you need to find a different, different angle for your story or whatever it might be. Um, another thing, uh, when I played for the Seahawks, uh, that I always found really uh, kind of funny was uh, they always stuck me with the new guy. You mentioned Fox Sports, uh, when they had, uh, they'd always have an intern or the guy just fresh out of college that, that was just doing his first few interviews and things like that, and, and uh, it was kind of like that, uh, I don't know if you guys, uh, you know, saw all the Chris Farley uh, videos from when he's on Saturday Night Live, and he would, you know, interview people, and, and he, he wouldn't really ask a question, he'd just make a comment, you know, and say, well, that was pretty cool. You know, some people over here right now, I'm going to talk to you guys. <laughs> They're all like, uh, like, what the heck? Who's Chris Farley? <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, anyways, it was fun. You know, it was funny stuff. So you get questions like, uh, so, you know, you're playing the Raiders this week. You know, and so, you know, and so sometimes as a person being interviewed, you have to, you have to just kind of know where the person, you know, what, what the person's wanting there, you know. Okay, and so you expand upon it, you know. The worst thing to do when you're being interviewed as, as an athlete or whatever it might be uh, for is just to give those kind of one word, uh, one word standard answers. You know, go ahead and give them something. Expand on it. Let them, uh, you know, take their question, take their comment, whatever it might be, and just talk about it. You know, you say, hey, you know, yeah, we're playing the Raiders this week. You know, they haven't gone off to a great start this year. Um, but you know they got some good players over there. We know they're gonna we're gonna get their best football game this week, and we're gonna um, you know we're gonna have to be prepared in, in, in order to try to win this football game. You know uh, that would be an answer you get. You know, and, and it's it, it gives them something that they can take back and maybe use as a soundbite or do whatever, as opposed to saying, yeah, we're playing the Raiders this week. You know, uh, Jeff. Rob, so that's kind of in contrast. Have you have ever seen Eric Bedard for the Mariners get interviewed? Uh, I, I haven't paid attention. Oh, it's just excruciating because he, he's the one. That, yes, no, yes. And then the other thing I was going to offer you. That yeah. That share. Oh, okay. you no, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, but that's that. That's a that's a tough thing, um, you know. You know to do. There's other times that a reporter will just uh, completely take things out of context. Uh, I was telling Jeff this, that, you know, I've, I've read articles in the paper and it has quotes and I, I know for a fact that I never said that, you know, <laughs> and uh, um, fortunately for me, it was always in a good light, you know, they, they'd take a quote, they'd, they'd take something I said and they would, they would, uh, you know, reword it to fit what they, you know, to fit the, you know, to try to reword what I was saying because they thought it sounded better, different things like that. And that's something that, you know, really, like I said, it never happened, it, it never shed me in a negative light, but it's not something that, you know, to me is right or should be done. You know, you should uh, should write the article, use the quotes that are said, those types of things. Um, and, and so that can be frustrating and, and bothersome at, at times. Uh, a lot of people ask me all the time, you know, when you're in the NFL, does the NFL do anything uh, to help train you guys and, and teach you guys on dealing with the media? And they do, um, because it's it's a it's a it's a business that's so image conscious and they're so worried about about things. Because as a, as an athlete or you know, any kind of high profile deal, you know, if anything you do um, negatively is in the paper, on the news, all those sorts of things. Uh, you know, you can take a guy that does a, a, 
you know, I, I know Jeff and, and all the interviews he did for his, his film on the Cougs. Um, a lot of those guys, they do a lot of great things in the community, a lot of things for the community and things like that that you never ever hear about. Um, used to always, used to always, uh, I used to always think it was funny because people would come up to me that I got to have a friend that didn't play football and I'd go to like say a party or something with all my football teammates and I'd bring my friend and my friend would say, gosh, I talked to so-and-so and man, he's really nice, he's just a regular guy. I'm like, yeah, he's just a regular guy, you know, he just happens to be good at playing, playing a ball game and stuff like that and stuff. So that, that always kind of was, uh, was interesting to me that, you know, that people perceived it that way and stuff like that. But anyways, yeah, it, it, it can, be, uh, can be a challenge, can be tough in, in dealing with the media. But then on the flip side, uh, as a person now, uh, I've, kind of, I've kind of flipped the script. I'm no longer the guy being, uh, well, I'm no longer the guy wearing this microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no longer the guy being uh, interviewed. So no one wants to talk to me anymore. But, but uh, I, I now I have an outdoor radio show. Um, and so now I'm the guy doing the interviews, you know, driving across the Cowlitz River. Uh, uh, coming here today, my, my wife says, yeah, I hear you guys talking about the Cowlitz all the time. <laughs> you know, so yeah, you know, we, we talk, about, uh, talk about that on our radio show all the time. And, and, and so now I'm the guy asking the question. I also did uh, some, some radio for the Seahawks for a couple years after I, I retired. I'm the guy asking the question, having to ask the tough questions. And, and it's a bit, uh, it's tough. For me, I can go all day long if you ask me questions and I can go and we can talk and we can do all that and I can handle that all day long. Asking questions, however, I don't know what it is. I struggle with it. I struggle with it. I've been doing the radio show for, uh, for the fishing show for a couple of years now. I did the Seahawks show for a couple of years and I still, you know, it's four years now, I'm still struggling with, with asking uh, uh, the right question or good questions or asking the tough question. It, it can be tough. So I don't know. Uh, if you guys are, you know, anyone's planning on being in the media or, or, or you know, radio, TV, newspaper, now websites, whatever it might be, um, you know, always kind of have a game plan. Uh, I know Jeff mentioned uh, when, when you are speaking, know, know your topic, know what you're going to have. We're asking questions is the same way when you're trying to get the information from someone. Have a game plan. Know what you're going to ask them. Know what you, what you need. Uh, I remember the first radio show uh, that I did for the for the for the fishing show. I completely blanked. You know, it's a setup where we have a, a fishing guide or somebody like that on the show, and, and we're interviewing them. Okay, you're fishing the callus, it's steelhead running. You know, you, you you know, what are you using for bait? What are you doing? Are you are you drift fishing? Are you, you know what do you, what kind of fishing are you doing? And, and uh, so my one host that asked a question. There's three of us on the show. The other guy asked a question. It was my turn to ask a question. And I didn't have a question. <laughs> so I started in. I figured I'd make it up on the way. And I got about halfway there and just ran out. I had nothing to ask him. And it was a dead air. It was awful. It was, ex it was an embarrassing experience and stuff. We, I guess we had to laugh about it later. But it, it's one of those things that you know you want to be, uh, be prepared, prepared for uh, there as well. Like I said, um, I think it's tougher being on the media side of things than it's being on on the other side of things because you know the other side of things you just you just seem to be answering questions you know there are things like I said you have to deal with um, but a lot easier than being the guy that has to has to come up with the concept has to ask the question do those sorts of things um, you know that's kind of my perspective you know I, I don't know if you guys have questions or whatever but I can kind of expand on some of those 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 things that that uh, that I, I touched on, or things that you guys have covered in class, but that, from my perspective, that's kind of been my experiences. And I mean, you know, um, they run the gamut. And, you know, in 14 years in the NFL, you, you get asked a lot of questions. Um, uh, I remember one time I was at the at the Super Bowl, and and uh, um, they started started making, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, Hasselbeck and. And so we start being funny about Hasselbeck. It was on media day, and you have all these reporters standing around. And, and so I said something. He, he had said something smart about me. So I said, well, you know, I'm not going to be outdone. I said something smart about him. Started talking about him being bald. 
<laughs> those types of things. Um, and I and I just happened to catch the eye of this reporter who was not, not as bald as Hasselback, but but on his way, right? You know, and uh, and the guy is ticked. He's ticked at me, you know, and and he's uh, um, yeah, he was you know he was really mad at me, and I said, hey man, I'm, you know I'm sorry. I, I picked up on it, and I said, hey, I'm sorry. I'm just you know it's just jokes, you know, just. Well, you know, let's see how much you're laughing when your hair falls out. I said, you know, it's already started. You know, it's, it's up here, you know, I got the, you know, and stuff. I said, but, you know, what are you going to do? You know, you're bald, you know, what are you going to do? But uh, he, he was not happy with me, not happy at all. It's kind of a funny story, but like I said, and, and, uh, and other, other things, uh, being at the Super Bowl is kind of funny because I was fortunate enough to go to two, one when I played in Atlanta, one here, obviously, with the Seahawks, but... But uh, um, it's some of those, uh, at the Super Bowl, you get people from all over the world asking questions. You know, uh, Japanese TV, Korean TV, uh, a lot of, you know, uh, Spanish TV, and all these different things asking questions. So it can be kind of crazy and, and kind of a whirlwind and stuff like that. But like I said, it's, it's fun. You kind of roll with it, you deal with it, and, and you know, you go on from there. So anyway. I'm hoping uh, some of you guys have some questions for me. Yes. Um, you talked about um, the NFL players and not going in completely untrained for the whole public relations part mm -hmm. of their job and their the image deal. Um, was there actual time spent, like maybe seminars or classes or something? Yeah. That's where People that, were taken in and yeah, I think I kind of got sidetracked on when I was making that point. I kind of got sidetracked a little bit, but but they do. They have uh, nowadays um, they have a thing called the rookie symposium where they where they bring all the rookies together and they teach you about dealing with the media and they they, they take real life situations. Every year um, we have we have uh, little mini seminars that they do. They actually hire acting clubs to come in um, to your facility and they'll, they'll set you aside and it's always a time when you'd be doing you'd be free to go <laughs> the coach doesn't give you time off from the day they just add it on to the end of a day but it's always a time you but you always pick up something they actually hire acting companies that come in and they do real life situations that that players uh, have found themselves in in the past it could be out with your buddies at a club, it could be arguing with your wife, or and and, and it's there's always a media aspect in there too that they 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 reiterate those things year in year out. Uh, your team will talk about it. They'll have rules that 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 govern how you how you handle the media and things like that, stuff like that. And guys can be fined for for not dealing with the media in the, in the, in the appropriate manner and stuff like that. But but yeah, there's there's training as a rookie coming in, and then every year. They have those little seminars that, that you know, try to try to dictate you know um, some real life situations. Yeah. Um, we talked about how you were always told that you couldn't do stuff. Right. Uh, when you were told that, were you just kind of like, well, probably not, and then something happened to where you were able to, or you were just like, no, I am going to, and then you were. You know, I wasn't like a defiant. I never was a defiant. I was always quiet about my goals. You know, I wasn't one of these guys, you know, that walked around talking about what I was going to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I always had a goal, but I was always, I wasn't a defiant, like, I'll show you, doggone it, you know. I just <laughs> took it as, as, you know what, you know, I was told about, you know, in, in junior high, you know, you need, you're too football crazy, you need to find something else, you need to do, do something else. Now, mind you, I still made good grades. I took care of business, but this was what I wanted to be. This is what I wanted to do. So I was always about finding, finding a way. Uh, Jeff mentioned I came from a small school. I had 14 kids in my graduating class. It wasn't like I had a bunch of uh, um, college recruiters banging down the door. But, I, you know, there's a way. There's uh, Just find a way. There's a will. There's a way. Whether... You know, for me, it was end up at a junior college and then, you know, work my way through there and then end up at Washington State from that junior college. And, you know, thankfully I met Jack, um, who, who helped, you know, helped a lot. But uh, to me, life is about opportunities a lot of time. 
and we're all given different opportunities and it's and it's all about am I going to take advantage of you know when that door opens am I going to run through it am I going to be ready to go through that door uh, Jeff mentioned that I did stuff in the off season you know uh, part of the reason is because you know I was uh, I was lucky to be one of those two percent. I'm very lucky, um, and I knew it could be gone at any time because the average career is three and a half years. I could have been uh, I could I could have been hurt, different coach, whatever it might be, and, and your career's over. It's done. And I've seen a lot of guys struggle after that, and I wanted to be prepared. I wanted to have the opportunities, and, and by preparing myself, I'm I'm in the insurance business now as well. Um, by preparing myself while I was playing, when the when the door opened when I retired to own my own insurance brokerage, I was ready, I was prepared. Um, so to me, life is about um, doors opening and closing, having your goal, working towards that goal. Um, I tell them, you know, I, I, I kind of give my boys the speech a lot of times when they talk about they want to play football. I said, well, you know, you can talk about it all you want, but what are you going to do for it? What are you going to do about it? You know, you're going to, uh, you know, it's, it, it, a lot of times it's not, it's just about, it's 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 just about running that marathon as opposed to to sprinting to the finish. You can talk about it, but if you don't put some action to it and do those sorts of things, it, it's not going to go anywhere. So, like I said, you know, people would say that stuff, and you just it's it's water off a duck's back. You know, you just keep moving towards your goal, trying to find a way to fix it. Because the way I figure, we all set goals, we all have things we like to do and want to do, but you know, and, and are you going to reach every goal you ever set for yourself? Uh, probably not hopefully not because if you are then you're not setting your goals high enough but but it, it you know if you don't reach that goal that ultimate goal of climbing Mount Rainier or whatever if you don't reach that ultimate goal if you got three quarters of the way up you're a lot better off than you ever were before you started in some way some shape you, you're better off well, yep. did you guys ever uh have certain guys on the team that you knew were just a train wreck, train wreck with the media, and you saw the reporter going towards them, and you were just kind of snickering, or just thinking, "Oh man, what's going to happen?" Um, not so much train wreck, where you know uh, the media kind of, you know, really didn't. In, in Seattle, you have a real friendly media. I will say that very friendly media in Seattle when I played for the Seahawks, guys didn't want guys. Guys were rooting for the home team, you know. They didn't want to embarrass a guy. They didn't want to. Uh, they didn't want to um, hurt a guy's reputation and stuff like that. And so they reported if there was something negative, they they would report it. But they didn't go necessarily looking for it like a lot of places. You know, uh, uh, playing in Philadelphia, doing different things like that. They would know who they would go to um, uh, to, you know, get the quote they wanted to get. Remember, I told you they always have a story in mind before they ask before they come to you. They, they know how they want this article to be written or how they want it to go. Um, and, and so, you know, they would know who to ask to get what they want a lot of times. But like I said, we had friendly, very friendly media here in Seattle, and that was, that, that's a good thing. So, what yeah. did you learn from that uh, nightmare experience with the radio show that you took? Out of that, I mean, something good came out of it, obviously. Right? Well, the thing that brought that memory up was uh, you mentioned being prepared, and as soon as you said that, I, that's the thing I thought about. You know, it's like um, it's just like you you always uh, you know you always think of the things that that you did wrong. You know, after a football game, we might win the football game. You had a great game. You know, you ran 65 plays of offense and 60. One plays were good plays, and those four bad plays, you lose sleep over that whole night because you're replaying that. Oh, I should have done this. I could have done that. And so, and what it taught me was never go into a show without having properly prepared myself. Because I thought I could show up. Heck, I've been dealing with the media and 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 being interviewed for 14 years. How hard is it to go and and do the other thing? What's well, a completely different experience in, 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 to me? And so I thought I could just go and just wing it and be there and do it, no problem. And, and that's not the case. You always have to be prepared, always have to prepare yourself and, uh, to do well. Plus, by being prepared, you have a confidence that you're going to perform better. You know, if, if you're not prepared, you're questioning what you're doing um, as you're doing it. And, and, you know, that's never a good thing. Always be prepared. And I, now, now I do that a lot with fishing. One thing I've learned, I've gone out and caught, not caught fish a lot, right? Um, but 
one of the things I've learned by fishing with good fishermen is most of the good fishermen that I know that they always catch fish, it's they go fish when there's fish to be caught, where there's fish to be caught. They have the reports, they know what's going on before they ever leave their driveway in the morning. They already kind of know what they're doing, where they're going, how, what fish are biting, what guys are using, all those things because they, they've prepared themselves and stuff. So that's, that's just another example of, of that.